All right, Don't ladies and gentlemen, after a end. quick little bit of a break we have, we are back for the third and final series of the evening. It is, of course, 4Love versus Tongfu here for the Fiong Yun tournament. Um, another best of three for us here on Beyond the Summit. Really excited to bring it to you. Once again, my name is Mont. With me tonight is Base Kip. How are you doing, sir? Doing very well. Looking forward to our final series, Five as you said, and... Should be a good one, 4Love versus Tongfu. I mean, Tongfu obviously coming in as the favorites, but I, I do think that 4Love stand a chance. Yeah, they really do. 4Love's uh, a team that's been around for a while. They've had some decent tournament results. But Tongfu, they've had actually a bit of trouble themselves uh, in the past couple of days. They went down 3-0 up against LGD. And even Joe has, you know, considered retiring. And, of course, this Tong is a man that people have called a burden in the past. I'm not going to name any names, but I think we all know who... That's talking about. So we'll see if Joe can get his play together. I know he's feel he's felt very, you know, I guess uh, emotional about his play right now. He's not too happy with how he's done, but Ten they can easily turn this around. They have a very strong lineup. I mean, you're talking about ZSMJ, the legend. Cobb was a great offlaner. I've seen San Shang play very effectively as well. Um, so we'll see if they can get this game going their Reserve way. Time. Yeah, I think the one thing for Joe is that his drafting just hasn't really adapted that well to the recent version and I think that's been a lot of the problem for Tong Fu uh, in terms of their in terms of their results of late. I mean like you said they've got some very solid players that SMJ is really coming into his own as a support player uh, since he sort of returned and, and made this switch and yeah there's nobody on Tong Fu that you could point to and say this guy doesn't deserve Tong to be uh, on to the pick. team so yeah hopefully they can just find a little bit of confidence maybe find some drafts that work for them and well, hopefully they'll do. Hopefully they'll just show us some good Dota in this series. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. I really hope they pick something nice. And uh, it starts out again like we've seen it so often. It's going to be that clockwork pick coming out from, of course, Tong Fu. Uh, the Slark is still available, which they've played to great extent. Obviously, uh, unfortunately, they lost to LGD with it, but uh, it's going to be Rubik Weaver for Four Love. And Rubik, I don't mind. We've seen a lot of that. We don't even need to go and talk about it because it's Rubik and mm -hmm. he's a very good hero. Weaver, though, is something that has fallen off a little bit, but still a strong hero. Then again, up against a Clockwork might be a difficult matchup for him. Yeah, so for love immediately, they Tom can't really Fu's have the Weaver as, as a 1v1 hero. I mean, offlane 1v1s and things like that are, are less of a thing now that tri-lanes are also uh, less of a thing. But Tongfu, they see the Weaver, they've got a plan in mind, immediately pick up the next Assassin. They, so they do have somebody to already put some pressure on him. Yeah, and... I think the next assassin is the perfect pickup here. Weaver, of course, if he gets Vendetta gank, that would be Tom kind of detrimental to his bad. life. So we'll see if he can survive uh, early on in this game. The draft is still going, though. And with the Rubik and the Weaver, we'll see what 4Love want to do with their other support. There's a couple of supports that have already been taken out. Crystal Maiden is still available, which would be a nice support, but also could go for Tong Fu, as that would be Dia good for you know them bad. to lock down. Uh, of course, San Sheng would very much like to have that Visage, but it's not available to him. Uh, the, the game that he did play up against LGD, he had many great familiar your stuns sadly he cannot pick that up as you can see joe is going to go ahead and ban out that bristleback right now realizing he doesn't want that to go there remaining. you know the other way for four love that's just too much of an annoying hero Five something important to notice remaining. slark has not been banned out yet and tongfu do value that hero at least they did Dying value that hero very pick. highly in their matchup against lgd so they're going to get the luna ban coming up for four love and another pick is going to go four love's way on top of that and we see, we'll see what they want to go for here with their next pick. And I'm, I'm assuming it may be something like that CM, but they might go for something that's more of a core hero. Yeah, we'll have to see. I think it's, I think they were maybe angling for the Bristleback a little bit with the, the Lifestealer ban, just because they already have a Weaver. Like, Lifestealer is not a hero. I think that fits amazingly well into Tom Tongfu's Fu's lineup. That would be their third melee hero. Um, and, you know, it, it's not, it's just... A poor hero to have against Weaver, but it is one of the good. Well, it's a good way to deal with the the bristleback. So I think a good ban from Joe there, getting rid of it. But for love, they just managed to get their hands on the on the Night Stalker instead. So similar kind of idea, very face rushy kind of hero, and um, not something that we've seen that much of of late. But we did just see it the other day, I believe. Yep. In, um, what was that? Pick. MVP. I can't remember the match. LGD. The top of my head. I think it was in March. Played in the offline Night Stalker. Oh yeah. 
yeah. And I was going to talk about that because I like the Night Stalker, but I prefer it in that mid lane because that capacity, you're able to get levels, you're able to be more effective with your Dyna ganks. Um, I think there might have been another game, but it might have been for the WPC Ace League that happened. I'm not sure. I don't think we saw one yesterday other than March playing it. Still, though, what's also important to know is they picked up Night Stalker, and I feel like Tong Fu could have gone for that hero against Weaver because you have that silence. It's so good at taking Weaver Ten down early on, remaining. but instead they pick it up themselves so that Tong Fu can't grab it. But Tong Fu go for Five. two. Very good support Remain. heroes in the Chen and the Crystal Maiden. So already a good draft for them starting out here. Both sides, I like drafts. Reserve I like their drafts as of right now. So, Tongfu are a little bit lacking in the late game department right now. I would say they've got probably a mid nix and off lane clock. So, whoever their carry is going to be, I guess needs to be equipped to deal with this in the late game if it does come down to it. I mean, Windrunner, whether or not she's going to be a support. Uh, she's still going to scale all right into the late game. Netstalker, not the best late gamer, but you still need to you need someone with a little bit of a punch to to deal with the Weaver if this goes late in. Yeah, for love, just going to be getting rid of the bad. gyrocopter, trying to remove those 1v5 heroes from the pool if they can. Yeah, and I agree with you. They do need to go for something that does have a little bit of a late game potential. Whatever they want to pick up, though, we'll, we'll see. I, mean, I was going to say the gyrocopter, actually, but for love did take that out of the pool Ten with their last band. Um, and, and, you know, I would say Slark, but if not, they had the Night Stalker. I mean, if, if, if it weren't for the Night Stalker here, I might say Slark, but the Night Stalker, I think, does an effective job of taking the Slark down Reserve because of that time. long duration silence at nighttime. So Slark can't gank as effectively. He's got to be a little bit more cautious around the map with the Night Stalker roaming in. He can't just run in like we mm. saw in, of course, the Dyer first game of the last time around. I forget what game it was Tom we saw uh, today, but to I, um, that Slark did work. I can't remember off the top of my head, but... Oh, okay. This is a very interesting pickup coming out. Yep, the Lone Druid is going to go for Tong Fu. He does have that late game potential. And that is somebody that can do the job there. And Joe's going to pick him up. And yeah. I was anticipating maybe like your safe lane Pugna. Because, I mean, obviously, Tong Fu, the, the option is either be prepared for late game or just ignore it completely and end yes. the game in yes. 15, 20 minutes. So I was anticipating the, the Pugna pickup and I was about to suggest it. But. No, Tong Fu go for something, I guess, a little bit more old school. They pick up the Lone Druid, and it's not a hero that we've seen a whole lot of uh, recently. So we'll see how it goes. It's definitely one of Joe's, um, you know, one of his signature heroes, I would say. I personally, I'm not a big fan of the Lone Druid, especially now. I wasn't a fan before, but especially now when it takes longer, you know, to get up and running and you Prepare don't have that armlet battle. choice like you used to have. Um, especially since the game is revolved around having early fights and taking early towers, excuse me, and uh, just being aggressive, really. And I don't think the Lone Druid Spirit Bear does that. I mean, you try to get farm on him, but people are going to look to gank him as much as possible. It's important. It's just as important to shut him down as it is any other carry. So with this pickup, Joe, it's, it's, it's an either hit or miss scenario here. I don't mind it considering it's the first game in a best of three series. We'll see how it does go for them. San Sheng is going to lead the way down here in the bottom lane. We'll see Four Love go ahead and throw up a ward here. Uh, and just, you know, of course, it's actually right on this magic bush. So it's going to go ahead and block both camps here. And so we'll, we'll see them maybe counter ward it. And it looks like there might be an engagement right now. Mu getting caught out of position. No, the burrow straight goes on San Cheng. The telekinesis is up. The, of course, power shot already went. The cogs are there. San Cheng is going to go down. That is first blood going in for Pretty Haw. He's going to take that kill on the wind ranger. They're going to back off now. You know, secure in what they've accomplished. The Burrow Strike Sand King actually did go down very low, but he actually didn't die. So he will survive. They'll take that first blood. And it looks like Mu got caught in a position, and the rest of the heroes got clumped up for Tong Fu. Yeah, really nice little start to this game for for Four Love. Um, and it looks like. Are they even. No, okay. The are they considering going aggressive? Pretty Hell's got some boots and a ring of protection up, so it does kind of look like you're. Maybe you're tri-lane farming when you're Sand King's just going to suicide to Roshan so that he can get a free trip back to base. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. And um, they're going to actually just leave Yim down here and then the solo offlane Weaver and the defensive try coming out now. And, well, defensive duel with, of course, ZSMJ in the jungle. Uh, they should know that... He's not solo. He's got the supports, apparently. Oh, they actually did roam down. They, they looked like they were going up top. For, so I spoke too soon. My apologies, everyone. But, uh, yeah, so Stan... As well as 50 or 400 will be down here. Before any other action happens, though, let's try to get some introductions real quick. Mm -hmm. So for 4 Love, we've got Yim. He'll be on the Weaver. Clipped. 50 400 on the Rubik. Stan will be on the Sand King. Hold on. I hope they don't go for a kill here. Okay. Looks like not. So I'm going to go mid, and hopefully no action happens. Mid, we have uh, Fan will be on the Night Stalker in that mid. Then in the top lane, we'll have Pretty Hall on the Wind Ranger, so. taking an Impale, but should be fine. 
Yeah, and very quickly on Tongfu, it's Kabu handling Nexus Assassin, Mu on mid on the Clockwork, that SMJ is going to be on his Chen. Uh, getting lifted on bottom lane is Xiao. He's going to get Burrow struck as well, so it looks like this is going to be another kill for Forlove. They're trying to turn it around on the 5400. He does end up dropping. Uh, and finally, we have Sansheng running away on Crystal Maiden. Yeah, so with all the action happening, it was a one for one trade right there. Of course, they get the kill on Zhou, and that's a huge pickup for 4 Love. I mean, just stop him from farming and get a kill going to your Weaver, or at least some assist gold or some assist experience, excuse me. So, whatever you can get really uh, is fine for him. And honestly, he is actually going to get got on the Sensor Khan, was coming in looking for a stomp, but he played that very well, backing what? right off. Yeah, that was. Phenol. Uh, yeah, Phenol, please. I don't know what that was about. That was like a BM pause from a, a spectator. I, I didn't know spectators could pause, first of you all. Can. You can. You can? Are you sure? I, I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I should do that You could right know. now if you wanted to. Uh, well, I'm not going to do I that. Wouldn't. No. I wouldn't. But yeah. Listen, if this was an NEL game, I'd be pausing all day if I had known that. So I'm, I'm apparently not a very good caster, not knowing some of the most you know, important things. Still, though, I mean... They, they went for that kill there. You saw them getting in position, and, and actually Yim just backed right off with the Shikuchi. So that's how it's going to be, I feel like. They do have the Sentry Ward down to the ground. Um, so they might be able to catch Yim out of position if this wave gets pushed up here. But still, so far, the Trilane now being aggressive for Forlove. They're going on Joe. The Telekinesis is up. The Shikuchi damage, the right click, the Fade Ball grabbing the kill. And Joe has died twice now in the past two minutes. So we're seeing San Chung Frostbite stand for our strike. That's the kill. That's what we were waiting for. Now Stan taking tower damage. Looks like he will go down to the tower. See him getting that kill in the end. But still a nice trade going through. And, and that's just more experience that's going to Yim with how aggressive they've been this far in the early game. Yeah, and I think this is 100% the reason that we don't see quite so much Lone Druid anymore. And I think Tongfu could have, you know, they really could have seen this this happening, the fact that the Lone Druid could be aggressively trialing against. And he's not a hero that... The problem with the Lone Druid is, one, as you mentioned, he's only really got one build anymore, it's Midas into Radiance. And the second problem is that he only really has one lane, which is kind of solo safe. And with aggressive trialings not being as good as they used to be um, anymore, you can't often make that, you know, you can't force that situation for the, for the Lone Druid. And there's no bear for Zhou for a whole minute here, so he is... He's in really big trouble. He's very sad right now, to say the least. But something we haven't looked at was, of course, any of the other lanes as of right now. We haven't seen Mu, how he's doing mid. And it looks like he is doing fairly well with 15 last hits. Fans only on, you know, 12. Two-man burst strike bottom lane. Net goes out, 5,400. Looks like he might end up dropping to right click. He's at SMJ, but it's a two-for-one trade. Yeah, it might even be three-for-one. They're all said and done here. Stan has a burrow strike. He's about to use it. Oh, that creep. Yeah, he blocked him in. Oh, my God. Poor the SMJ. I think he would have gone down regardless, but yeah. the Sand King grabbed with a kill, and that's three-for-one. This uh, this tri lane is, is absolutely going horrid for Tong Fu. And if it's any indication of how the game is going to go, Four Love have a drastic lead now, and... Well, the good thing is Moo, like I said, is getting some farm in that mid lane, up in the top lane. I think the Nyx Assassin's doing okay. He's got 10 last hits, but the Wind Ranger's sitting on 22. So, two lanes going the way of 4-Love, two lanes that really shouldn't be. And then a lane in the mid, which is, you know, it's sort of even. Fan's not doing too bad. It is the first night time. He's got boots in a bottle. Maybe looking for a gank in the Nyx Assassin. This is the timing for the Night Stalker. Kabu's got to be careful. He may know that they're missing from it. He's just going to, you know, back right off. He wasn't, you know, up at the creep with trying to last hit. So, smart play from Kabu being there down bottom look at where Zhou is right now they were actually m sitting mid trying to find a gank instead they leave Zhou all alone and this is another death there's a tp coming in it looks like bro strike actually on the bear maybe they're gonna go for sanshing instead they'll grab that kill and Zhou is just like well thank god it isn't me yeah fortunately he managed to dodge out of the way of the swarm otherwise they wouldn't have they would have known where he was and probably would have been able to pick up that kill but for love now doubling the kills of, of Tong Fu. So SMJ is doing his best to head over to the tri lane and help out whenever possible, but it's really difficult for the Chen. Um, and I don't think he's had the best luck in terms Radiant's of creeps either. So. Um, I'm not sure what Tong Fu would do. For Love can just keep this tri lane here. As you said, both of their other lanes are doing just fine. Fan is trading farm against Mu. Uh, and Pretty Haw is absolutely crushing Kabu. So maybe we can see the Clockwork or the Nyx Assassin move away from top, uh, move away from their lane down to bot soon, but otherwise things are just going to continue going exactly the same way. Yeah, I agree with you. And the scarier thing to think about is that Fan, this is nighttime, 
but it's not the timing just yet. Can you imagine when he starts roaming to gank how much they're going to do down in this bottom lane? They're doing it right now, but you know they're going to see that fan is rotating through. They're going to expect something's happening. The six minute rune will go. It is up in the top rune spot. You can see Moose spotted out fan down there. So now you can see Tongfu probably being a bit more passive down in this bottom lane. Maybe get back towards the tower. But this does mean that Yim gets so much room to farm. He's got 21 last hits, and he's actually not too far ahead of the Lone Druid. But that doesn't matter when you've got two kills, and Joe has died three times. So uh, they will tell Kinesis the bear. They're going to work on him. It's very tanky. Burrow Strike as well. I'm not sure if there's enough damage here. There's the Night Stalker. With the Night Stalker, it's enough damage. 300 gold going the way of Fan there. So another nice pickup. Actually, Wind Ranger is going to head back home, uh, it looks like, and has, of course, the Ring of Basilius and Ring of Regen. And if I wasn't crazy, I'd say that's a Vlad's, but no, it's probably going to be a mech. Um, and Urn is actually going to go out down to the bottom lane. So Fan's Urn is already done, which is nicely timed at the first night time. So you can see Mu is, and Tongfu is just sitting here, maybe looking to try to get something going, but it's going to be a tough fight for them. Yeah, and Kabu actually used his Vendetta top to drive uh, pretty hard out of the lane. So he's not going to have that ready to go for bot. It's only 30 se 13 seconds on cooldown here, so maybe, but... Four love, they're like, what, four heroes are off the map suspiciously. Let's just back away from bottom lane uh, and not risk anything. And looks like Tung Fu might have just smoked on top of a ward. There was a lot of pinging going on. Yeah, they might have seen that. So we'll expect to see four love playing passively. I mean, yeah, look at where Fan is under this tower now. You can see that he's just going to sit back, void the last hit, and make sure that he doesn't get ganked here in this mid lane. So um, this has just been the play style coming out from 4Love. Play passively when you need to, aggressively when you can grab the kills. And in fact, they they know somebody's up on the high ground. I feel like Hookshot's going to go in, but now there's backup coming in from 4Love here. Moo, Shackle Shot, he is going to fall. Look at the counter initiation. The Impale does come through. Fan in a bit of trouble. He's still tanky enough to survive. Silence up on Kabu. Void may be going if he gets enough mana. And will to do the last hit there on the Nyx Assassin. Two down now for Tongfu. Great turn around there. Not done yet. Burrow Strike comes through. The Power Shot Snipe from the Wind Ranger to grab a third kill in that engagement. Oh, that's... Man, if you're Tongfu right now, you are just reeling. The, the expectation was that at least you were going to get the one kill on mid, but for love, they've just been playing better Dota. They've been proactive in terms of the warding. They spotted the smoke. Uh, and unfortunately, again, Joe is still pretty much just a one-trick pony on this lone He's going to keep farming for the next 10 minutes uh, if he can, and that means that the rest of his team has to fend off for love, 4v5, which is a bit of a big ask. Well, I mean, he's not done yet. That's the thing. And he's gotten killed a lot. But And even though it seems very, you know, desperate for Tongfu right now, he's close to a Midas, you know, at least a Midas recipe, which is, is something to get you started towards that later stage of the game. And if they can hold off right now, if they can hold off from getting engaged on, if they can hold off from any bad fights, maybe they get back into this. But for 4 Love right now, they need to keep the pressure on. They know that it's daytime right now, so they have a time, a little bit of a respite to farm for Fan. He can use his darkness once he skills it up. He hasn't yet. Um, um, and you look at what Weaver's doing now. He's going to be going for seemingly a Lincoln Sphere. And oh, not again. Another smoke on top of a ward. Poor Tongfu. Yep. They, that, that ward was right there. They should have caught them out. At least the... Sorry, Mud. I, cu I cut you off. No, no, it's yeah. okay. No, I expect that from my co-caster when there's things happening. I actually prefer it. So, appreciated. And they're actually going to roam up here into the top jungle, it looks like. And Yim may be caught out for the first time in the game. They're going to have to have the Vendetta and the Impale right after to lock him down. And they're actually splitting up right now with the Vendetta from Kabu looking and scouting things out. So um, the smoke actually doesn't accomplish anything. Darkness does go, and they're going to try to find Mu here. So as the smoke goes, Mu falls, it looks like, with one more Void to get the kill there. Actually, they stole Flare doing some damage. Night Stalker does get that kill regardless with his right click. So he will back off now and, and another kill going the way of 4-Love, despite them smoking for Tong Fu. And they'd like to kill Yim top, but not sure if they're going to be able to. And yeah, Senshing already forced the TP bottom lane as Joe gets jumped. So, I mean, they're just trying to get... Joe just wants room. Any room to farm would be, would be great. And he's barely getting it now. He has only 37 last hits, which isn't bad, but Yim has 53. So not only is Yim keeping pace, he's setting the pace himself. 
Um, with 200 gold and the Perseverance in the bank. TP down bottom. Stan is in here. Power shot onto two. Stan, Vendetta up. Frostbitten, he's the first to die. Everyone's rather low. You can see the Rubik's way out of position. 5400 gets impaled. That's exactly what Tonk needed. Those TP rotations were on point. Now Joe picks up his Midas. At 10.50, it's the start of something special for Tong Fu, I feel like. Yeah, the one thing that's worth talking about is the fact that 4 have a huge lead, but no towers taken. So, yeah, I would definitely wouldn't count Tong Fu out of this just yet. And I think they've maybe, I think 4 have maybe been a little bit Radiant's too focused on dealing with the Lone attack. Druid. Y you locked him out of the game early on. Radiant Take the 4v5 advantage and just restrict Tong Fu's map control. Which, they didn't manage to do it all, and now Tongfer are actually doing a little bit of 5 manning of their own. They're uh, going to start grabbing some tower gold if at all possible. Yeah, they are going to get pushed back for now. Tongfer doesn't want to fight into this, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them actually go and try to defend the other towers. The Shackle shot on the bear, it's going to get lifted as well. Stan maybe looking to Burrow Strike and will. Fade Bolt, not enough damage to take it down. They, they committed a lot of mana for that kill on the bear, and they couldn't get it, so... Um, that's going to be Tongfu making their way to the mid lane. Radiant's Fan getting TP'd on right now, and attack. maybe an Impale as well. He's going to take that damage and maybe be in some trouble. He will go ahead and silence Kabu. Mu's going to back off. They don't want to try to commit to that fight. They will deny the tower nicely, but up in the Radiant's top lane, that's top Yim taking another gone. tower. That's a two tier one's gone in the span of about two seconds of each other, so. Yeah, and looks like Fola have realized, okay, maybe that dive on the tier one bot was a little bit of a mistake. They've got the mech now finished up on the Wind Ranger just needs to get that delivered and this is exactly what they need to be doing. Split push with the Weaver and just continue to use the rest of their heroes to, to restrict Tong Fu's map control and we're just about to head into the next night as well so this is a, a really big moment for 4 Love to keep the pressure on. Yep and now Fan who has that night time up for himself he's got Darkness ready to go he's got an Ogre Club they're ready to start 5 manning or at least looking for kills across the map you can see they're going for tier 1 tower bottom and uh, Tong Fu, you can see how low they're playing. You see where they're at, Son Sheng and Kabu, maybe just looking Dyer's to roam to another lane, but for now, they, they have only a Radiant's very little amount of vision on the map. Fallen. It's all defensive vision as well. This Radiant Ward was just placed, and they will spot out any sort of ganks that come through, except for the fact that they're smoked up now. So um, they think that they might be safe here. You can see that mid lane is Yim. They might look for a kill there, but um, they see there's a ward here for the Dyer team. They know exactly where everyone is for Tong Fu. They're going to room right in there. Flare did go. Stan's leading the way. He's got Burrow Strike to go for it. And ZSMJ may be the target and will be the Burrow Strike. This should be an easy kill. Void, the power shot to clean it all up. And now more damage going. Kabu, he silenced up the hook shot or excuse me, the shackle shot went. Kabu's still alive. Void is up in one second. Oh, but the spike carapace just in time. The double impale. Kabu, power shot though, comes through pretty hot with a snipe and the double kill. Now the shockwave coming out, but the mech is up and ready to go. Four love, take two, and looking maybe to push him to a tier two, or at least give more room for Yam to farm. And Joe, at the moment, but I don't know if he's going to be able to finish a radiance um, this game. And the, the question is as well, even if he gets the radiance, does that win the game for Tong Fu? Because that's the moment where the lone druid is get, going to be at his absolute peak. Every minute after that. You know, four love are only going to get tankier. The radiance burn is going to matter less, and the radiance is the biggest item that the lone druid buys the the whole game. So, while things are looking all right for Tongfu, I I still worry even if they manage to get that radiance. Out. I agree with you. I don't think that radiance is going to do nearly enough. The shackle shot into the creep. Joe in trouble. There's a fight happening right now. Joe is going to be the first to fall. A lot of damage coming from that flare, but Mu in trouble. Telkinesis back. Shockwave going. Hand of God's up. And now it's level 6, San Shang, he's getting the frostbite off, it's a 2 for 1 trade thus far, <laughs> Yim getting another kill, that's going to be on the clockwork while that all happens, Wildwing Ripper goes down, Yim trying to chase after San Shang, so uh, another one that's 2 for 1 in the trade of 4 love, and Joe goes down once again, so any farm that he had, he did buy his ratings, of course, recipe, which is huge before he died, but still he does fall. Yeah, and... Full of probably just going to back off, wait for the Lincoln Sphere up on the Weaver. Uh, they do still definitely need to make use of this nighttime. Fan's not too far away from his BKB. But yeah, it looks like they're just going to go and farm for a little bit here. Tung Fu still doing their best. I think that was a it was an okay team fight. You know, well played by Sunshine dropping the Freezing Field and picking up the kill on the Sand King. But they might need to go for a smoke gank, something like that. Mu and Kabu just need to team up and see if they can make any space. Yeah, I and, and this, I feel like Tongfu's Mu has been 
not as you know impactful as he should be on that clockwork. I mean, this is a, a top tier pick that we're talking about that's not being used as effectively as it should. He's got three deaths and two assists, so his stat line's not the best. He, his item choice is fine, obviously. I mean, he's got boots, he's got a bow. He'll probably go for a bracer into a drum if necessary. Get phase boots eventually, maybe some sort of other boots. It doesn't really matter, but I feel like Moose should be the one that's kind of dictating what they do. Dictating how they initiate, dictating where they initiate, with Kabu helping them out in that regard. Like you mentioned, those two roaming around, but they're not doing it now. It seems like they're just kind of just sitting around trying to get something done. And I think a part of it we haven't really talked about it is Four Loves, you know, vision and map control. Every time we've seen them gank or or look for, you know, counter ganks or or say, you know, they're smoking up, the wards have been there. So credit the Rubik for having such good vision across the map. I feel like. Yeah, and it's definitely the Rubik. Stan's just been farming towards his Blink Dagger this whole time, and he's actually getting very close um, as he finishes off that creep camp. So, yeah, it, Tongfu have been playing at a massive disadvantage. We even saw them go for smokes. They attempted to try and find kills, but as you said, Forlove just spotted all of them coming, and especially that one smoke on mid, Tongfu were hoping to get one or two kills out of that. They got three deaths, and I think that was the the... the moment where everything really started to fall apart for Tongfu. Yeah, I agree. So, right now, 4Love going to continue to be in the driver's seat as they have Radiance point the lead at 10,000 gold right attack. now and 7,500 experience. So, they're looking strong. They're looking for another tier 2 tower here. And, in fact, actually blinking into the tree line is Sand King with his newly acquired Blink Dagger Epicenter. Still on level 1, but I don't think he cares about that. I think he just cares about getting a nice initiation off. So... Sentry Ward is up for the Dire team, saying, okay, we want to have complete and utter control here, especially with a Vendetta roaming around from Kabu, but he'll sit under the tower, Vendetta's done. Uh, and it looks like they don't want to fight this. Blank gonna come in, there's the Burrow Strike, hook shot in from Muon. A Cogs on two, keeping them in pinned in right now. Hand God's gonna fly, Mech as well, going for four love. Mu in trouble. Freezing Field's going. Time lapse out. Stan taking damage from that Freezing Field. There's the Burrow Strike in. Fans haste is up. Shackle shot void. The damage there. Buy back coming in from a couple of heroes. ZSMJ. The next to be chased down. And pale up onto two. Now still chasing. They want ZSMJ. They'll find him. Now the hook shot, or excuse me, the cogs up. Mu doing damage to him. Still three down on the side of Tongfu Zhou. He can't afford to die. It looks like he very well may. And Fan just trying to work on Zhou. The void. That'll grab the kill. Four down. Mu may be the fifth and final nail in the coffin, and it will be for love at 18 minutes in. The underdogs take down Tong Fu in game number one of this series. And I think GG is right. Very nicely played by for love. They looked at the draft. They said, "Why should we give the lone druid any space at the start of the game? Why should we risk our offlane tier one uh, and have them get anywhere?" So, just very well drafted. Very well played by for love and. Maybe Tongfu will be able to find their feet uh, in game two. Yeah, hopefully so. Hopefully we can get it to another uh, three-game series here. But for now, we're not quite sure. Obviously, a very good start for 4 Love in this first game. Uh, we will take a quick break, maybe even a smoke break for some of the team members between 4 Love and Tongfu. We'll bring you game number two in just a moment, guys. Remember, thank you for joining us here on Beyond the Summit. Make sure you follow this channel, of course, for all of the Dota action happening all across the world. Uh, once again, my name is Mont. With me is Base Kip. If you enjoyed the action, if you enjoyed the casting, please go ahead and let us know in chat. So we'll be right back, guys. Stick around.